Okay, so so far we have discussed the phase diagram of uh, one component system and uh, two component systems. Uh, today we will discuss the phase diagram of three component systems. Okay, so first uh, what we need to do, we need to draw one equilateral triangle, then we have to uh, divide each side of the triangle into 10 equal parts and then we have to join the opposite points like, like here. Okay, so, first we need to draw one equilateral triangle like ABC. So, we have suppose three liquids, liquids A, liquid B and liquid C and at a given pressure and temperature, we are going to draw the phase diagram of the three component systems containing A, B, C. First, we will draw one equilateral triangle and then each side, you can see that we have divided each side into 10 equal parts and then we join the opposite sides. Now, along line B, C, so, if you consider the line B C here, this B, this B and B C, okay, along this line, the concentration of A is 0. Okay, so, concentration of A increases, you can see the arrow here. Okay. Here X A, X B and X C are the mole fractions of A, B and C and sum of their mole fraction equals to 1. Okay. So, the concentration of A increases from like this okay. and then concentration of B increases from here from like this concentration of B increases. Okay. Concentration of C increases along this line. Okay. So, along line B C, along this line B C, concentration of A is 0 along this line. Okay. Similarly, the concentration of B along line A C is 0 and concentration of C along A B line is 0. Okay. So, along line B C, Okay, since the concentration of A is 0, we get a binary mixtures containing B and C. Similarly, uh, uh, since along line AC, the concentration of B is 0, we get binary mixtures of component A and B. And along line AB, since the concentration of C is 0, so we get binary mixtures of A and C. Next, we can so we have we now we know how to draw one equilateral triangle for a three component systems okay now let us consider three different uh, points here okay so three different composition mixture rather so a is here a is so here point a for point A, con, uh, mole fraction of A is 0.2, mole fraction of B is 0.8 and mole fraction of C is 0. Okay. So, since if you go back and check, okay, so the, constant, the mole fraction of C is 0 along A B line. Okay. So, the point will fall along A B line. Okay. Now, X A is 0 0.2 and X B is 0 0.8. So, we have 20 percent A and 80 percent B, right. Okay. So, if you go back and check, okay, so X A increases from like this. Okay. So, X A is 0.2 and X A is 0.8 means it will fall here, it will fall here. So, this represents the, this point A, this represents uh, or this point corresponds to mole fraction of A 0.2 and mole fraction of B 0.8 and mole fraction of C 0.0. 0. 
Now, for we have, we have considered uh, two more uh, uh, composition mixtures. The second composition mixture we considered is Xa equals to 0 0.8, Xb is 0 0.10 and Xc is 0 0.10. Okay. So, we have to go, so this is along this here okay, or here okay, along this line as I said Xa is 0. So, here Xa is 1. 2, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 like this, it goes like this. So, Xa is 0 0.8, Xb is 0 0.1 and Xc is 0 0.1, it will fall here. Now, we consider another uh, composition mixer where the concentration of, or the, or the, or the concentration of A is 0 0.42 or the mole fraction of uh, A is 0 0.42, mole fraction of B is 0 0.26 and mole fraction of C is uh, 0 0.32. Okay? So, it will fall uh, very uh, near to this point, approximately here, okay, very near to this point. So, in this way, you if I give you, uh, if, if one, give, one gives you any composition mixer, you what a three component system, you can really uh, locate the point. Okay. Now, we will consider one real system like water uh, or real uh, ternary system or three component system we consider water acetic acid and chloroform ternary mixer uh, at uh, room temperature and one bar pressure. So, this is the phase diagram for water acetic acid, acetic acid and, uh, and chloroform ternary mixer. Okay. Now, you can see, okay, so what are the silent, silent features here? Water and acetic acid, they are completely uh, miscible in all proportions. Okay. Second point is, point number 2 is chloroform and acetic acid are completely miscible in all proportions. So, water and acetic acid, acetic acid they are completely miscible in all proportions, chloroform and acetic acid are completely uh, uh, miscible in all proportions. Point number 3 is, but water and, uh, water and chloroform are partially miscible, okay, they are not completely miscible. And the point 4 is, one phase system will be formed from a two phase water chloroform mixture if acetic acid is added at high acid and, and at high acetic acid concentration, they will form one phase system irrespective of initial proportions of chloroform and water. What I said here is, okay, so suppose we have, we are starting from somewhere here this point. So, at, so at this point the concentration of acetic acid is 0, okay. So, now what we do, we keep on adding acetic acid along this line. Okay, we have two phase, two phase, two phase and here we get one phase system. Okay. So, if we have high acetic acid concentration, so we get one phase system. Now, few more thing here is water and chloroform, they are completely miscible in these, these regions. Okay this region. So, two phase system is formed within this boundary, okay, within this boundary from here like this to here. Okay. Now, and this, okay, so we will discuss few more things about this uh, curve like following the line, if we follow the line A1, A2, A3 and A4, we observe that at some point A2, the solution still has two phases, but there is more water in chloroform phase that is phase at A2 prime and more chloroform in water phase, the phase at A2 double prime. Okay. So, you go back and check it. Okay. So, we at if we have this composition at A2, so we get two phases, one is at A2 prime, another is A2 double prime. Okay. Second point, there is more acetic acid in water rich phase than in chloroform rich phase, because as A2 double prime is near the acetic acid apex than A2 prime. The third point is at point A3, two phases are still present, but the chloroform rich layer is there only trace amount. Okay. So, at point A3, A3 is here, this is point A3, uh, this is point A3 here. At point A3, okay, so still two phases are there, but water the chloroform uh, the amount of chloroform is very, very small. The point A3 is called isothermal critical point or the plate point because if we add acetic acid further, 
to suppose point four, to point A4, the whole system is single phase. Okay. So, so point A3 is called isothermal critical point or the plate point or point A3 is called isothermal critical point or plate point. And point number 6 is the tie line, line the line connecting A2, A, A2 prime and A2 double prime suppose represents that the solubility of acetic acid in water and chloroform. And this line can be slanted or parallel. Okay. So, these are the tie lines okay, represented in blue arrow. Okay. So, these lines they, they represent the solubility of acetic acid in two different uh, medium, one in uh, chloroform and other in water. Okay. Since the solubilities are different, uh, solubility of chloroform, uh, solubility of acetic acid is different in water than that of uh, in chloroform. So, here we get the slanted line. So, these are experimental lines. Okay. So, that is all about phase diagram of three component system. Next, we move to uh, one dimensional random walk. Okay. So, why it is important? The random walk is central to statistical physics okay. and it is essential in predicting how fast one gas will diffuse into other and how fast heat will spread in a solid. So, these things are important. Okay. So, so, it is important to know one dimensional random work. So, how do we basically start with? So, we consider a simple or simplest way to understand uh, one dimensional random work is uh, flip a coin and take a step. So, you take a coin okay, and you flip it and whatever the outcome is accordingly you, you take a step. Okay. So, one dimensional, we are discussing one dimensional random work. So, basically, suppose you are, so you are moving along this line. Okay. So, walk along a line, each space being the same length. So, so, the, so you divide this line in equal spaces like this. Okay. Then before each step you flip a coin. So suppose you are here, you are your, your this is your starting point. So you are here. So before each step you flip a coin. See now you, you flip a coin. Okay. If it it is heads, okay, if the outcome is heads, take one step forward. If it, it is head, you take one step forward. So now you are here if if heads right and if it tails take one step back okay so if you get tails so you are here so if tails you are here so starting your starting point is here somewhere now you are you are flipping a coin okay so so suppose at first you you get heads, so you are here, then you get another head, you are here, then you get another head, you are here and then you get a tail, so you again come back here, okay. like it goes like that. And the coin is unbiased, so the chances of heads and tails are equal, so, so the probability of having heads is half, right, because a tail can have uh, or coin can have either heads or tails and the coin is unbiased, means there is no biasness about your head outcome of head and tails. Okay. So, so this is this is how uh, one can carry out. Okay, carry out the one down, one dimensional random work. Now, what is the problem here? The problem is, is to find the probability of landing at a given spot, say n, after a given number of stays, steps n. So you keep on flipping the coin. Okay. And you are flipping the coin in capital n, n times, okay. And in between, you get some heads, some tails, okay, and combination of this, okay. Then at the end, suppose you are here, this is so this is your end point. So, what is the probability to land here, which is n step? suppose n step, uh, uh, the distance between the starting point and end point is small n step. Okay. But, but you are 
you are taking n number of capital n number of steps means you are flipping the coin capital n number of times so that is the problem here okay now how we can work out so we define a quantity first here so okay so the quantity we are defining here is fn n which is the probability probability of finding the particles beginning at 0, ending at at n after n steps. Now, what we are defining here, f, f is nothing but the probability of finding the particle beginning at 0. So, the, the, the starting point is 0 we are considering okay? and the probability of finding the particle at end point a small n here okay? when you are taking capital N number of steps. Okay? So, we will go very, very slowly here okay? for a suppose for a walk of 0 step. So, 0 step means we have not done anything here. Okay. So, so, in that case what is the probability? So, f, so total number of steps taken we have 0 and probability of finding ending point is 0 also. So, this is 1, right. So, we have not done anything there. Now, for a work of 1 step. Okay, so, here capital N is capital N is 1 okay. and so what, are, what is the problem, what is the what is small n here. Okay, so, when capital N is 1, so either you go in the positive direction, so for positive one step in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the from the forward direction, so you get n equals to plus 1 or n equals to minus 1, right. Okay. So, what is the probability of having plus 1? So, you are flipping the coin. Okay. You are, how many times you are flipping the coin here? Only one time okay. and you are going either one step forward or one step back. Okay. So, for in both cases the probability is half. right? So, f 1 plus 1 is half and f 1 minus 1 is also half. Very easy to understand, very, very easy. Okay. Next, we consider two steps okay, for a walk of two steps. So, two step means capital N equals to 2, right. Basically, you are flipping the coin twice. Okay. So, what, what would be the, what could be the outcome? So, in both cases you can get heads. So, you, we write h and h. You get first heads and then get tails. The third possibility is you get first tail and then you get heads. And the last outcome is you can get both tails, right. So, if you get heads and heads both in both, uh, uh, both both the times, so for one heads you are going one step in the forward direction. So for two heads you get two step in the forward direction. Now for one for HT case first heads means you get one step forward then tails one step backward. So, you get plus 1 and minus 1. So, basically it gives you 0. right? So, there is no change from your 
starting point. Similarly, for th also you get 0 and when both in both cases you get tails, okay. So, you get you, you actually you are going to two step backward in the backward back direction. So, you get minus t. So, what is the probability there, okay. So, for h h if 2 plus 2 is 1 times 1 by 4, right. Because you are getting h h 1 time and total number is 1 by 4. So, you get 1 by 4 probability, okay. Then for h t you get f 2 0 is 2 times 1 by 4 h 2 and t h right. So, half and for t t you get f 2 to minus you get again 4 1 by 4 right extremely easy to understand ok. Next we consider 3 steps. So, for a work of 3 steps Okay, so, capital A n equals to 3 because total number of steps you are taking here is 3. What are the outcomes? Okay. So, you can have h, h, h. So, in this case you get plus 3, then you get h, h, t, you get plus 1 because 1 h means plus 1, 1 t means minus 1, then you can get like h t h, this is also plus 1, you can get t h h, you get plus 1, then you get h t t, you get minus 1, then you get t h t you get minus 1, then you can get t t h, you get minus 1, and then you get t t t and you get minus 3, right. So, how many possibilities are there? So, a total number of possibilities which equals to a total number of possibilities. to 8 ok. Now, we will calculate probability of having all 3 steps in the forward direction. So, f 3 plus 3 ok. So, you get 1 by 8 right. 1 times is coming out of 8 times. Probability of having a net increment in the steps in the forward direction is f 3 plus 1 you get 3 by 8 right. Then f 3 minus 1 you also get 3 by 8 and f 3 minus 3 you get 1 by 8. So, these are the probabilities ok. We consider now four steps, okay, for a four step, for a walk of four steps. So, the possibilities are One possibility is all heads. 
So, if you get all heads, you get uh, you, you reach to uh, four steps in the forward direction. Okay. Then you get H H H T. Then H H T H H T H H T H H H. Okay. So these are the for in these four cases you get plus 2. Okay. Then you get 2 heads and 2 tails, okay. there, that is another possibility. Okay. So, you get h h t t h t h t h t t h t h h t T T H H right okay and so H H T T H T H T H T T H T H H like this so you get how many times five times and we get, we have get, we will get another times okay. get like we can start with T H and then we can get another T H like this. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times we are getting right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 I guess. So, in all cases you get 0 okay. and then we can have 3 T 1 H then T T H T T H T T and then we have H T T T. So, in all cases we get minus 2 and then we get T all cases we get tails. So, here we get minus 4. Okay. So, so we get how many possibilities? So, 1 plus 4 6 6 12 4 uh, 1 plus 4 5 plus 6 11 plus 4 15 plus 1 16. So, total possibilities total number of possibilities into 16 right. Okay. So, next <coughs> we calculate the probabilities. Okay. So, what is F four plus four is one by sixteen. F four and then we get plus two. Okay, so we, we get four times one by sixteen. So you get one by four. Then uh, what is F four minus two? This is again 4 times 1 by 16. So, we get 1 by 4 and then we get F 4 minus 4, we get 1 by 16 okay. and F 4 0, we get 6 by 16 right okay fine in general the probability of taking in one number of steps to the forward is 
in a total number of n steps okay is w n n1 is n factorial by n1 factorial times n minus n1 factorial where n minus n1 is nothing but number of steps in the back or at the back, the back direction. And then with this we need to multiply with probability. Okay, so, we get p n 1 times q to the n minus n 1. So, here we are defining uh, another coordinate. Okay, it, is, it is the w n n 1. Okay, it says the probability of taking n 1 number of steps to the forward direction in the total number of n step, capital N steps. So, this is defined by this. Okay, so, this one is, is slightly different from f that we discussed. Okay. So, what is p here? p is the probability that the step, the steps is to take in the forward direction and q is the probability, probability that the steps is to take in the back direction. And in this special case means flipping a coin we are discussing here. So, in this special case, means flipping a coin p is equal to q and equals to half. Okay. So, probability of p and probability q they are equal and the values uh, is, is half. Okay. Now, so what we need to do now? Now, say we have taken three steps in the forward directions. and one step in the back. Okay. So, total number of steps how many we have taken? We have taken total number of steps equals to 3 plus 1 equals to 4 and this is the value of capital N, right. And small n 1 is 3 here, because we have taken 3 steps in the forward direction. Okay. So, what is w 4 3? According to the equation we described before. Okay. So, this is your capital N means factorial of capital N. So, this is your 4 factorial by 3 factorial times 
1 factorial times p to the p what is the value of p? p is half okay, times what? 3 okay, times q is half to the 4 minus 3. Okay, so, that is the value. So, we get factorial 4, so 4 times 1 by 8 times 2, so 1 by 4. Okay. And if you go back and check, so we, so this thing means 3 times head and 1 times tail, right? means 3 step in the forward direction, 1 step in the back means 3 times heads and 1 time tails. And for this case, this is nothing but we need to calculate a 4, 2. Okay, so, if you go back and check, so W 4, 3 is nothing but a 4, 2. Next, okay, next we discuss some uh, very simple thing, okay, simple but important thing. Okay. Next, we discuss mean values. How to calculate mean or average value? Okay. Suppose, we have a set of numbers. Okay. Any number you take, huh? suppose, suppose 4, 3, 6, 8, 3, and 4. Okay. So, suppose we have 6 numbers here. Okay. So, if we want to calculate the average of these numbers, how do, what do we do usually? Average of these numbers. We can calculate very easily like 4 plus 3 plus 6 plus 8 plus 3 plus 4 divided by how many numbers we are considering here? 6. Okay. So, we get 28 by 6. So, this is the average value of these numbers, the numbers we have taken here. This is the one way to calculate. Another way to calculate is another way to calculate average is another method to calculate average value is we consider 4 the number times how many, what is the probability of having 4. Okay. So, probability of number 4 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3 times probability of 3 plus 6 times probability of 6 plus 8 times probability of 8. Okay. So, 4 times what is the probability of 4? So, out of 6 numbers we have 4 twice. So, probability of having 4 is 2 by 6 plus what is the probability of having 3? Again 2 by 6. What is the probability of having 6? Is 1 by 6. And what is the probability of having 8? 1 by 6. So, we get 8 by 6 plus 6 by 6 plus 6 by 6 plus 8 by 6. Okay. So, here also we are getting 28 by 6. So, in both cases we get the same number we, we, we are supposed to get actually. Okay. So, in so, so we average of any quantity we can calculate like number times probability of that number okay, and so on. So, suppose, suppose 
u be a variable which can assume which can assume m discrete values okay what are those those values like u1 u2 u3 and so on you get um up to um okay and their respective probabilities are is saying p u 1 p u 2 p u 2 p u 3 and so on up to p u m. So, we consider a variable u which, which, which has m discrete values u 1, u 2, u 3 up to u m and the probabilities and the respective probabilities means probabilities of having u 1 is p u 1, probabilities of having u 2 is p u 2, probability of having u 3 is p u 3 and uh, so on up to p u m. Okay. So, the mean value or mean or average value of u mean value of u you can write like this or you can write like this So, this is the mean value of u okay. and the denominator we wrote p u 1 plus p u 2 up to p u m. Okay. So, this denominator usually this is uh, 1, okay. usually this is 1 if we consider all variables. Okay. So, we can write like this like i goes from 1 to m p u y times u y okay so this is the average or mean value of u and as i said in most cases, the normalization factor that is written in the denominator is 1. Okay, so, this is nothing but your normalization factor. Okay, so, what do we get? We get mean or average of a quantity u or, or a variable u is
sum over probability of a particular variable times that variable ok, that is it ok. Now, we will use this one to calculate the mean value of a random walk problem ok. So, next we discussed, next we discuss calculation of mean values for the random work problem. So, we already know W n n 1 is factorial n by n 1 factorial times n minus n 1 factorial p to the small n 1 and q to the n minus n 1. Okay. So, the mean number of of steps to the forward direction is forward direction. So, mean number of steps of forward direction is nothing but n 1 bar or we can write n 1 average is like this. So, the value of n 1 varies from 0 to capital N. Okay. Either you get you can have uh, a possibility where you do not take any step in the forward direction or you can take all the steps in the forward directions. Right? So, value of n 1 varies from 0 to n and this is the probability times the quantity, quantity is n 1. Okay. So, we get Now, if we substitute the value of W n here, we get this expression. Okay, fine. Next, okay. now n 1 p to the n 1 is p del by del p to the p to the n 1. Right? So, if we do the differentiation p to the n 1, we get n 1, basically we get n 1 p, p to the n minus 1 and this gives you this. Okay. So, n 1 p to the p to the n 1 is nothing but p del by del p, p to the n 1. Okay. So, n 1 average you can write p del by del p n 1 goes from 0 to n factorial n by n 1 factorial n minus n 1 factorial p to the n 1 q to the n minus n 1. Okay. So, we can further write like this p del by del p to the p plus q to the n. This is from binomial theorem. Theorem we can write. Okay. So, it gives you n 1 factorial n 1 bar is p times n times p plus q to the n minus 1. Okay, fine. Okay. 
then we know for this case for this flipping of of a coin case okay p plus q is 1 so you get and p is half so you get n1 average is half times n so n by 2 right so if if you flip the coin n times okay the probability or the, the, the average number of steps you can have in the forward direction is n by 2 okay then what is the average number of steps in the back direction okay so you get total number of steps is n minus n1 so n minus n by 2 okay so you get n by 2 so average number of steps in the backward direction is also n by 2 so total displacement from your starting point total displacement from the starting point okay so forward direction minus back back direction so you get n by 2 minus n by 2 and you get 0 that 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 is expected right so if if, if, if capital is sufficiently large then you are expecting the total displacement is 0 thank you